Now for our story. Peggy Douglas, at Mary's niece, has just put in a phone call to Wakefield's bank. The bank where Bill Mead has accepted a job from David Bowman. Hello, I'd like to speak to Bill Mead. Oh, it is? Uh, hello, Bill. This is Peggy. You did? I guess my voice hasn't changed very much. I'm fine, thank you. Bill, the reason I called, I, I'd like to see you if... Well, today, if possible. I'm in town at the drugstore. Oh, no, I don't think we'd better... Oh. Well, all right, if you like. You gotta be fine. I'll, I'll be there. Yes, sir, I remember the place. Very well. Bye, Bill. The Brown Palace Hotel, please. 750. I hope next day I have to postpone our appointment. Oh, hello. Nicholas Bourne, please. Maybe I could have asked Bill to meet me earlier, but bank doesn't close. But... Oh, hello, Nick. This is Peggy. Well, or something nice, I hope. Well, Nick, that's why I called. I wanted to tell you I'll be a little late. Would six o'clock be all right? Oh, just something. I I'll tell you when I see you. All right. Thanks, Nick. Two telephone calls made by Aunt Mary Lane's niece, Peggy. One to Nicholas Dorn, the man she's engaged to marry. And one to Bill Mead, the man she once loved, but who married Kit Calvert. Yes, she thought to herself, she was going to marry Nicholas, forget all about the past. As she hung up the receiver, Peggy had wondered vaguely at the urgency in Nick's voice. She seemed particularly anxious to see her. Peggy was only too right. Nicholas was anxious to see her. With that far from the usual one for a bridegroom to be, he'd been feeling himself for this appointment with Peggy. He had something very important to tell her. Now that he'd postponed the appointment for an hour, he was afraid of those extra 60 minutes, afraid he might lose his resolution. Needing something to occupy his time, he hurried down to the little cocktail lounge in the hotel. The girl he'd met there the last time he was in was sitting at the bar again. And still, Nicholas had no idea that she was Kip Mead. Oh, the mysterious stranger returned. Oh, hello. One meets the nicest people in bars these days, did you notice? How does one? Are things looking up for you since I last talked? Anything but. Oh, really? That's too bad. I thought maybe all your problems had melted away. Don't be deceived by this appearance of careless abandon. And she has a heart weary and worn. Oh, dear me. Yeah, things have been going steadily downhill. How about you? Likewise. Oh, that's too bad. Well, for my part, I decided what I'm going to do. Well, that's half the battle, if you can stick to it. Uh, what did you decide, or am I being too inquisitive? No, not at all. If it happens, you're the one who's responsible for my decision. I am? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Remember, you told me not to knock my head against the stone wall... Mary, hoping I could win the girl's heart later with my beauty and charm. Yes, I remember. And I'll stand by it. Oh, uh, decided you're right. Going to cancel the whole deal. Tell her, no go. Just building up to it now. A little spiritual courage, you know? I see. Well, it's doubtless pretty hard on you, but I still think you'll come out better this way. Uh, I suppose so. Self coin, really, I just hoping, thinking it might pan out by some kind of magic. Yes, I know that side of it, too. But believe me, magic is not the answer. <laughs> You're so right. Magic hasn't been very effective since the mystics like Merlin went out of business. Nothing's effective, my friend. You have to be realistic. And you understand, of course, that I don't necessarily follow my own advice. Does anybody ever? You know, I still can't believe it. I thought I was such a smart guy. Had all the answers. And then, boom. Then well, maybe you'll we'll both be smarter next time. I'm pretty sure I will. Mm, I wouldn't want to make any rash promises at this point. 
Not even able to visualize the next time from where I sit. I survived this. I think I'll be coming from it. Nicholas had a drink, but he didn't enjoy it. He was too keyed up. He kept glancing nervously at his watch. At last, he excused himself, started to his room. Quit side, looked after him softly, wondering vaguely who his girl could be. There were so many new people in town since he'd been away. I'll take my check now, Tom. Well, it's all paid, Mrs. Mead. Mr. Dorn took care of it. Oh? Uh, uh, wait a minute. What did you say his name was? Mr. Dorn. That writer from Hollywood. I thought you knew him. Dorn? Nicholas? Oh, well, sister, you certainly did at that time. Uh, pardon me, Mrs. Mead? No, nothing, Tom. Nothing at all. I just found out what a great little fixer up I turned out to be. What a fool she'd been, Kip thought as she walked through the lobby. Advising Nicholas Dorn not to marry Peggy when it was the very thing she wished would happen. For then she could be sure that Bill and Peggy would never be able to reestablish the relationship they'd had originally before she'd managed to split them up. At that same moment, the two young people kept the so anxious to keep apart. They were meeting in a spot which had many memories for both of them. At the curve of the river on the edge of town, Bill had arrived first. I wonder what Peggy wants to tell me. I wish you'd hurry. Her voice is warm and friendly, more like it used to be before. Hello, Bill. Peggy. You're certainly pumped. Yeah. it. Good to see you. Well, I haven't been here for ages. No, neither have I. Everything looks the same, Doc. Yeah? It's funny. The outside things don't change. No. I've thought of that, too. Sometimes it's sort of hard to believe. It goes through so much, it seems that the world would look different, too. Yeah. Remember how we used to sit here in the summertime? Yeah. It was always so cool. Even though it was sizzling in town. Mm-hmm. We used to talk about all the things we do someday. Remember? Yes, sir. I remember. You said you wanted a little white house with bright red shutters. Yes, and you said you wanted a, a den with a fireplace in it. Mm. And a red shed with a... What was that kind of a saw? <laughs> a circular saw. So I could make things for you for the house. Yeah, that was it. And you wanted a circular driveway to come up to the front door. <laughs> yeah, and a tulip bed in the middle of the yard. <laughs> the kitchen was going to be yellow with blue tulips. Mm-hmm. And an enormous living room. And a row of animals marching all around the... All around the dress of walls. Goodness, let me crazy, kid. No, you weren't that crazy. And it wasn't very long ago. Bill, the reason I wanted to see you today... Yeah? I wanted to tell you that... I've done you an injustice and... I'm sorry. Oh, no, Peggy, you mustn't talk that way. Well, I understood how you felt. Oh, I've been so mean. Mean and inconsiderate. Well, I had a penny to me. No, you didn't, Bill. Mary was right all the time. I, I just didn't want to admit it. I was... You had a right to be. The way things look, naturally you thought I was pretty much the heel. But uh, since Kit came back and everything was explained, I'm very ashamed of the way I treated you that morning you came out to the farm. Oh, don't worry about it, Peggy. It's water under the bridge now. But it, it does make me awful happy to know that you don't... Well, you don't hold it against me anymore. The way you acted, I was sure you hated me. It always worked. I admit that made me feel pretty low. I know, Bill. That's what I wanted to tell you. I don't hate you at all. The hurt, the bitterness, it's all gone now. My feelings have changed completely. Thank you. I, I can't believe it. It's true, Bill. I wanted you to know so that when, when we both go ahead with our new lives, we don't feel we're building them on... And unhappiness and misunderstanding. Real life, Peggy. I don't understand. What real life do you mean? Bill Mead looked anxiously into Peggy's face as he asked the question. There'd been a note in her voice, a solemnity which frightened him. Perhaps Bill thought he misunderstood her. 
Perhaps Peggy's answer would not be the one he hoped to hear. 